Okay, we have a little technical difficulty there. This is the Hot Seat Radio Show. I am your host, Donovan Sadiq, and we are trying to give it to you fast, furious, and nothing but the truth. And when they say you tell the truth, it shall set you free. We're, we're broadcasting live from Okinawa, Japan, and uh, uh, my crew is not here, unfortunately. Uh, you know, I'm in Japan. I'm on assignment here. I'm visiting some friends and uh, trying to get away from the uh, little madness there. But it still does not uh, stop me from hearing what is going on with Idiot Gutierrez and the city council and what Highland Fairview is trying to do to our city. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have told you what the plan is several times. Highland Fairview is now positioning their employees to be on the mm-hmm. school board the uh, planning commission, and on the council. And what these idiots don't realize is what everybody should realize. You will not be in power forever. So by Mr. Idiot Gutierrez trying to consolidate power into the mayorship, which doesn't make sense because if we have a city manager and an assistant city manager, that's over $200,000 of taxpayer money going to people who actually run the city to give this guy power to a point and stuff. You know what? I'm, I'm going to say this and I'm going to say it. And you guys listen to me very carefully. You're not always going to be in power. So what you do today will backfire you on you tomorrow. If you lost the election and one of the anti WLC Highland Fairview people became mayor, what, did, what the hell do you think they are going to do? Okay. The WLC won't, won't be made in 25 years. Do you actually think you're going to hold that seat for 25 years, Mr. Idiot, Goofy, Damn Gutierrez? You need to think about that. I would strongly advise taking baby steps in what you're doing. Because what you can do today can be reversed tomorrow. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Look what's going on at the national level. All the executive orders that uh, Obama has done, this guy's just reversing him and reversing him and reversing him. It's going to be a back and forth, push and pull, which is a waste of the taxpayer's time and waste of the people's time. So I want you to think about that. And you guys just listen to me that are listening to me. Now, uh, I was on Pastor Don's show and we were talking about, you know, idiot moron, Evan Moron. And I'm going to have to tell you this. He's bitching and moaning, and he's basically doing an end around. Instead of being a man and manning up and calling me and saying, Donovan, uh, can we meet? Can we talk? Or whatever the deal is. You know, he's going to go through Pastor Don, which is his right, whatever. And, you know, of course I'm going to get the message. Uh, And I'm not speaking about him, you know, even though he doesn't listen to this uh, radio show, even though he does, but he doesn't, but he does. Uh, I'm not saying, oh, you know, this is my message to you, because if I have something to say to you, Mr. Moron, I would say it. And you know that because that's how I am. But instead of being a man and manning up and getting on the phone and calling me or uh, emailing me or whatever you need to do and don't use that excuse. Well, you blocked me from everything. I didn't block you from everything. The point is you're very arrogant and you need to humble yourself when you are wrong. Am I going to stop attacking you and stuff like that. I don't attack you because I have nothing to do. I don't attack Gutierrez because I have nothing to do. I don't attack Victoria Baca because I have nothing to do. I don't attack LaDonna because I have nothing to do. I will attack and put on blast any public official that I feel is not working in the interests of the people. I don't care. I'm an equal opportunist. I don't just deal against Highland Fairview people. And this myth about me uh, and, you know, again, my friend, Rafael Gutierrez, you know, he's a Highland Fairview employee. I understand that. Uh, You know, I have respect for the man because he has respect for me. At least I think he does. And imitation is the greatest form of flattery. So when I imitate him, uh, it's basically, you know, just just jibing and joking at him because, like I said, I have no problem with Miss Gutierrez. You know, he's getting a, a, a white envelope. And God bless you, man. You got to make money somehow. So, um, you know, me criticizing Highland Fairview and corporations, somebody's got to do it. They're not working in the interest of the people. You know what we got to do? I looked at the plans. I read them. I, I know what it says. You know, this person's on the radio all the time. And just bad mouth in Highland Fairview. Don't you know Ito is a god? 
I'm sorry. I'm, I have to disagree with that. I have to disagree with that. So, you know, it's nothing personal. It's my opinion. Where and when has it gotten to an America where a person's opinion doesn't matter? All opinions matter. Now, the question is, are all those opinions fact? And that's where you, the listener, have to decipher that. We are giving you information. They're giving you misinformation. You have to decipher what is in your best interest. If you think that in 25 years you're going to sit on your ass and wait 25 years to get a $9 an hour job that's going to be uh, taken anyway by automation, which has already been proven, uh, the uh, Panama Canal, the Nicaraguan Canal will be done by then. So at least 40% of all goods is going to bypass the West Coast, period. It's just going to go right around. Um, and wait for that job. Good luck to you. In 25 years, I will be almost 75 years old. Would I care by then? I barely care now. The only reason I'm speaking up is you have to have all the information to make a decision. And all these people who are condemning their grandchildren to warehouse jobs and slavery jobs, man, golly, really? Really? I would never do that. Not to my children, much less to your children. Moreno Valley deserves a lot better. Now, as somebody who was a child and was raised in Moreno Valley, before it was Moreno Valley, uh, I think we can do better. And that's why... I and my team and people that are involved, we're trying to do better. You want some warehouses? Fine. What I'm saying is we have enough warehouses. The proof is in the pudding. It is not bringing the revenue that we need. That's the proof in the pudding. And that's my stance. What Highland Fairview is doing, these people are emboldened. And they're emboldened because they are backed by Highland Fairview, who has deep pockets than the average citizen. Because if, if, if Highland Fairview had not, had not and would not be putting their input into our elections, this would not be a major problem. Because, again, these unethical people cannot win without cheating, lying and stealing and uh, misinforming the uneducated. And we have a lot of uneducated people because they refuse to read. Now, Evan Morgan uh, made a, a comment. And, you know, here's Mr. You know, uh, he takes my name and tries to run it through the mud and stuff like that. But yet no apology. No apology. I'm a black man. You know, uh, a black man is already has a heavy, heavy negative connotation. You don't think that I take offense to the fact that you have the nerve, Mr. 10 month army reject to question my service above yours, Mr. James Bond, Mr. I play with dolls and simulate forcible rape, Mr. I street race and street drag illegally and I'm on the school board. Yeah, I said it and I'm going to keep saying it. Anybody that does it, a grown man, a normal grown man does not do that. Now, people say, well, how do you, how dare you? Have the gall to say that about Evan Moron. All right. What gives me the right to say that? Let's see. I have a degree in social and behavioral science. That's a fact. And in the course, does it make me an expert? I didn't say I was an expert. But when a person exhibits traits of immaturity and doing things, a grown man, doing things Taking dolls, playing with dolls and, you know, simulating forcible rape. That is an alarm signal. For things to be looked at and watched. And I don't know about you people and you parents and people that listen. You might agree with me. You might disagree with me. I love Michael Jackson to death, but I would not leave my kids with him. Would you? This man is on the school board now and he's making decisions for our children that are in the school district. Would you feel safe with a man that displays these kind of traits around your daughter? I know I wouldn't. Thank the Lord I don't have any daughters because children are very vulnerable. 
and they look at adults as authority figures. A man like this, in my opinion, is a time bomb waiting to happen. I wonder why his wife left him. I really do. It's none of my business, but I wonder. But see, he doesn't like it when you talk about his family, but he'll get behind a fake profile and attack you, attack your family, attack your credibility, attack your accomplishments. And then he turns around and acts like, oh my God, I never worked for Highland Fairview. I don't do those things. He can't explain $30,000. He can't explain $5,000. He can't explain $10,000 that was funneled to his mommy. But yet... He, after serving 10 months in the military, has the nerve to question myself or anybody else. You didn't even make it into the real army. And I'm going to tell you people out there that are listening and you're not military affiliated. Okay. In my opinion, and to a lot of veterans opinions, if you didn't make it into the real military, and you didn't finish your school, your technical school, your A school, your MOS school, you never were in the real military. It's like, you know, doing junior ROTC. Just because you did junior ROTC, does that make you a military person? It doesn't. You have to get in there, you know, be certified in your job and start your job. Mr. Mr. Moron never did that. He served 10 months. That's a fact. So like I said, this is my book and only speaking for Donovan Sadiq. In my opinion, you're not a veteran. That's my opinion. You know, you're not a real veteran. You know, that's like these guys. Oh, yeah, I was in Desert Storm and I was in Vietnam and I was in all this stuff. But they were a cook. They weren't in the combat zone. They were back here in the States, but they got the medal. You know, there's a difference between a combat vet and just a vet. And all. there's all kinds of circumstances in that. But but let me tell you this. Um, I used to go down to Fort Lewis, fly down to Fort Lewis and Fort Bragg. And our main mission there was to help the uh, uh, rangers practice in their paratroop jumping and stuff like that. Now, the Army has a 10 percent casualty rate when these guys jump out of airplanes. So out of 90, let's say full jumpers out of a C-130, 10 percent of them are going to hurt their ankles and, you know, maybe break some bones or whatever. That's just to be expected out of that 90 percent. So ask yourself this. Does the army put those guys that got injured, broke their ankles out of the military? They don't. They let those guys heal up. They put them on CQ duty, give them light duty, what we call in the military. They might have to go in the office, shred papers, you know, they'll they'll find something for them to do, but they don't put them out. Now, when you're in school, technical school, MOS school, your job school, A school, whatever you want to call it. And let's say you do hurt yourself. They do the same thing because, you know, you're 10 months in. They've already invested this amount of time. It's very hard for the army to let you go for the simple fact that in the 10 months, that's money that they've already paid out. So if you don't make it, um, it's very hard. And a lot of people make it for they don't make it for very various different reasons. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, now everybody remembers when Evan Morgan was claiming he had a top secret clearance. Everybody remembers that. Okay. But he only showed us this little piece of paper that showed secret and he won't show us the whole document. There's a reason why he won't show us that document. And I'm going to tell you, from my experience, they do not put you out of the military because you hurt your foot. Unless your foot is completely mangled to where you can't walk. uh, It's it's very rare. But usually when you hurt yourself like that and your drill instructor or your uh your sergeant in charge, your NCOIC, if they see traits in you that might be alarming, they will order a psyche eval on you. And what a psyche eval is, you know, uh, uh, guys that have PTSD, that's sometimes you get a psyche eval because let's say this guy is just constantly always angry or uh, it's just something out of the norm. It, does, it is nothing to be embarrassed about. Um, you know, I didn't get a psyche. Well, maybe I did get a psyche eval. I just don't remember it. So I'm not going to say that because somebody's going to look it up. And then da, da, da. so I, I might have gotten a psyche valve. Um, I do have been diagnosed with PTSD. 
Uh, I don't know why. I don't think I don't believe I have PTSD, but the military does. No big deal. I'm not ashamed of it. Whatever. You know, all these things that uh, Mr. Morgan uh, attributes to me and questions me. But if you add it up, I was talking to a person the other day and they said, I looked up your DD-214. What's the big deal? Everything, like you said, everything that you said is out there. You just got to look for it. So Mr. Intel, Mr. James Bond, why can't you seem to find my 214 and any other document you want that I put out there four years ago? It's out there. Just look for it. And how dare you try to tell me what my name is? Number one, being a descendant of a slave, the names that we are given aren't our names anyway. Your name is not Smith. Your name is not Jackson. Your name is not whatever. If you go to Africa, there are no Jacksons and Smiths unless you go to Iberia, which was a former United States slave colony. Wow, this guy has so much knowledge, but, you know, he doesn't have 11 degrees. You know, so uh, uh, changing your name means nothing in this country, Mr. Moron. You know, why is your name Evan um, Morgan? Why can't it be Moron? The only thing that matters when it comes to your name in this country, your names mean nothing, okay? Women get married, they get divorced, they go back to this name, they go back to that name, whatever. What identifies you in this country is your social security number. That is the one thing that will never change. So no matter how many times you change your name, your social security number will never change. So there's a hint for you, Mr. Moron. You're not known by a name in this country. You're known by a number, just like a prison number. That's why they give it to us. And that is your number from the day that you uh, receive that Social Security number, which takes about six months after birth, might, might even be earlier, until the day you die. You dumbass. So even though I'm away over here in Japan, I'm going to do this show and I'm going to continue to talk about uh, possibly Mr. Pedophile. Evan Moron. And I clarify that again. Possible pedophile, Mr. Evan Moron. I think you are a joke. I think you are a time bomb waiting to happen. And I want everybody listening to me to know that I said it. And when it happens, and if it ever happens, you've been warned. But but don't ever ever, ever, ever serve 10 months and never make it into the real army and tell me or another veteran who's a veteran and who's not. You're not in a position to do that, Mr. I didn't make it. And when you, when you show us a document, Mr. Moron, show us the whole document. And you know, those that are listening, you want to know why he won't show us that whole document? Because there's a code at the bottom of it. And that code is like a reenlistment code. And, you know, they mean certain things, how he was put out, whatever. Show us your 214, Mr. Moron. Let's see the whole 214. You're asking for mine? Put up or shut up? Why don't you put up or shut up? I don't have to. Mine's out there. You're the public official. You work for me, public servant. I want to see your 214. You, but you sit out here and you brag you're an intel officer And when I say officer, I don't mean like officer. I mean, you know, he's a person in intel. And uh, in my career field, even if you're enlisted, you're an intel officer. They give us our intel. So it doesn't mean anything to me. But uh, you're Mr. Intel. You bragged that you had a top secret clearance. Well, show it to us. Don't show a secret. Everybody in the military has a secret clearance. That's your baseline clearance. A secret clearance. Have I had a top secret clearance? Yeah, I did for about two months during the B-2 testings. When the B-2s were still secret, we would fly to Edwards on a tanker out of March. And you can verify that. We were doing the uh, B-2 testings after they were done or our cell was done. We got downgraded. Simple as that. Because that's how secret the B-2s were at that time. Are B-2s secret anymore? No, they're not. 
And sometimes that's how it works. But you got to have a baseline secret clearance to even upgrade or downgrade. And even if you go to Boeing, sometimes they have to upgrade you to secret depending on what projects you're working on. And then once that project is over, you're, you're downgraded. But the fact of the matter is they don't just strip it from you can never get it again unless you've done something, you know, hyenas. So uh, for those out there that, you know, don't understand the military and how it works, you ask any military person who was really in the military and they're going to tell you, "Eh, yeah, you were in it, you were in training, but you didn't really make it into the real military. And that's pretty much how it works. And to a lot of us old schoolers, we don't look at this person as a military, you know, as a veteran. You're not a veteran. You didn't make it into the real military. When you make it into the real military and you got your your boot camp uh, ribbon and you finished your A school and you can show us your smart transcript, which shows us all the schools you've attended. Mr. Moran, you don't have to show me your, your 214. Show me your smart transcript. That tells me all the schools you've attended, Mr. Counterintelligence, Guerrilla Warfare, Cyber Warfare, Hand-to-Hand Combat, Survival School, Spy Tactics, Spy versus Spy Tactics. You've done it all. That's what you keep telling in your mind. And again, I have a degree in behavioral and social science. And this person, as everybody knows, is very narcissistic. That's my phone going off. I'm going to call Diana uh, back in a second uh, as I'm here in Okinawa. So that's the plan from Highland Fairview. Oh, shit. Uh, Damn it.